Come join us as we dive deeper behind the scenes of security and cybercrime today. Interviewing top technology leaders from around the world and sharing true cybercrime stories to raise awareness. From the creators of Vigilance, the newest global technology newsletter, translating cyber news into business language we all understand. So please help us keep this going by subscribing for free to our YouTube channel and downloading our podcast episodes on Apple and Spotify so we can continue to bring you more of what matters. This is Cybercrime Junkies, and now the show. Welcome, everybody, to Cybercrime Junkies. I'm your host, David Morrow, and in the studio today, we're very excited about this episode. Uh, it's been coming for a while. We've been working on um, getting our special guest in, and in the studio today is my always positive, sometimes absent co-host, Mark Mosher. Mark, how are you this morning, sir? I am nothing but consistent. You are nothing so <laughs> but consistent. That is true. So, that is right. That is right. This is going to be a great episode, David. Tell us, tell the listeners, who do we have in the studio with us today? We do. We've got guest. Omar Masri, who is a very uh, internationally renowned uh, software entrepreneur, founder, and CEO of Memori IO. And uh, he's worked with some of the biggest names in business and in security, including Dell, uh, Sentient Science, Quest Software. Um, he's been a leader in the industry for years. Omar, welcome to the studio, sir. Thank well, you for having me, David. So, Glad we could finally get yeah, together. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you're a jet-setting world traveler, and so it's it's exciting to kind of get you while you're in the mainland today. So that's great. So we're really excited about this because I think you've really – driven and identified a, a really important void in cybersecurity for, for small, mid-sized businesses. But please tell everybody, let's, let's start, let's back up just a second. Tell everybody what your current role is, what the current organization is. But then we want to hear about, you know, how, your origin story, how, how it all started. Sure. So currently I'm the CEO of Momodi. Momodi is a uh, kind of a startup cybersecurity software company that has kind of a, um, it's a little bit different than, than your traditional um, security software company selling stuff. And it was kind of born, we started around when, right before COVID, similar when you started this podcast right before COVID. <laughs> yep. um, and yeah, so it's a little different. And our goal is to, isn't to sell you, sell a particular feature um, in cybersecurity. It really, it's to actually help business owners to just secure their their businesses, right? Whether it be on-premise, really old stuff, or all in the cloud, doesn't really matter to us. Um, so we've we've kind of um, innovated in a way that we can just whatever you kind of need, um, we can help you cover the gap. If it's everything, if you got nothing, it does it. And it, uh, if you if you already have stuff, you can keep what you have and just cover the gap. That's kind of our mission: is to actually make it possible to implement the the, the best practice recommendations. So what we found is that um, recommendations from all the government agencies are actually quite simple. Hey, follow these eight things. Mm -hmm. um, and in theory, it's kind of simple. It's almost like secure your house. Yeah, you get a lock, get some windows, you know. But in practice, business owners are actually finding it cost prohibitive to actually go and implement the eight things. One, they don't know, you know, do I do them all or do I just do three? Right. Or um, And then I can't afford to do them all and who can do them for me, <laughs> right? So... Well, that's um, a great cause. There's a big yeah. I mean, yeah, it's it's yeah. it's it's a great cause because that is the sector that Mark and I live in every day, and we speak to business owners, yeah. leaders, and they have security concerns. They all do, right? And mm -hmm. they and they don't necessarily know where to start. And like you just said, whether they should do all of them, what levels should they start with, etc. So. Um, I, I, I love your platform because it really allows them to uh, try things out at no cost, which is great. And, and, and really right. it helps guide them through kind of a, a security maturity, 
right? As like we, we always think of like the Gartner maturity scales and things. And that's one of the things that we coach clients through is just, you know, you know, t- t- take time and money out of the equation. Let's find out what you need given your industry and your your uh, go-to-market strategy, your data, right? And then from there, uh, uh, kind of come up with a roadmap to kind of get you there eventually. Um, and and, and, Correct. and so, so Memoria is a great step. Like it is, it, 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 it's a really holistic mm-hmm. approach. It's fantastic. Correct. So, and just in the past week that I've been here in the U.S. Um, visiting customers and stuff, um, a couple of hacks happened to companies that um, that we care about and need help. So, you know, I was at Michigan University of Michigan. Mm-hmm. Apparently, some investigator hacked into their servers to um, to try to you know assign stealing stuff. And uh, but even worse, um, I have a buddy who has a business in the um, they do software for uh, EMS businesses. You know, all the transporting mm-hmm. you know, patients stuff like that. And some of these small, medium dispatching businesses. They have infrastructure mm-hmm. and, and they have exchange servers. Two of them got ransomware, right? Literally just got ransomware. Yep. So, uh, and it was a simple attack. If they just would have had a Mamori server there, it wouldn't have happened, right? So, um, yeah, so right now we're just working through making a one pager and it's, it, it's free for them. They're, they're a small shop. They have less than 17 employees, right? right? So it's like, the, it's like, it's like it's, there is no reason for these small businesses to just keep you know, to be exposed. And that's kind of what um, we're, we're trying to do is just um, get out there and say, hey, if you're a small building business and you have infrastructure, it's a no-brainer. Just download by Modi. We'll help you install it. And and um, so you can stop giving your money away yeah. <laughs> to ransomware. Well, yeah. yeah. And and <laughs> so let's let's circle back to something that, that you said, and that's about like controls are simple, right? Um, when you talk mm-hmm. about controls, what do you, just for the listeners or people that are watching kind, kind of what just to explain what those are. Yeah. So if you look at, so every country, every region, there's, you know, like in the U S the, um, there's publications about, Hey, these are the recommendations right. for you as a business of how to secure. We have NIST, we have, so, the, we have NIST, we have CISA, yeah. FBI, like all, so many different organizations, CIS controls, CIS. So there, there, there's various controls. And when we say controls, we really mean like, standards best practices right recommendations correct best practice yep. standards and if you get that to it so if, um really what what people actually find it hard to do is the access management mm-hmm. so people are usually good with their email protection right because right? if you use gmail or app well, everybody can relate to they that kind of take everybody that uses point. email everybody can right. can yeah. do it yeah, yeah right? that's right so that's okay unless you're still running and you know your own email server which is very rare everyone's got the cloud so that they're yeah. kind of covered you know, laptops now have at least built in, you know, people turn on their antivirus. So um, the endpoint protection at a base level, it's OK. Right. Um, and then it's when people it's the it's the access to now the infrastructure. How do I get to my if I have my own exchange server? How do I get to my own database? How do I pr- kind of protect yeah. that? And that's where people start to kind of fall apart. And then some people hire consultants and they have developers and, and different parts. You know, people are working remote. So it's, it, the problem became more complex, especially post-COVID. People like to work three days a week at home and two days. So it's like the infrastructure is kind of spread out. So how, are you, how do you handle the controls around your infrastructure? Mm-hmm. Um, and there's different ways to do it. And people, and this is where executives get in trouble because executives sometimes for the businesses aren't technology experts. So they just, Most they just times trust. they're not, right? <laughs> they, they, they actually, that's right. They just trust, hey, they actually call their, sometimes their competitors and say, hey, what right. are you doing to protect yourself, actually, yeah. right? <laughs> let's work on this together, you know? It's like, um, that's what usually happens, you know, that's what kind of banks all kind of do the same thing and telcos kind of do the same thing and law firms do the same thing. They all kind they of do. kind of do, that's their ecosystem, right, of friends and uh, enemies, um, so to speak. Yeah, so so we help with my money helps you with the control. So we make it so you don't have to be a super cybersecurity expert, um, technical person to deploy a Mamori server, for example, right? And in some regions, we're actually people are like, hey, how about you just send us a box? So we have some partners that are actually just making a little appliance and they just install it somewhere and plug it in and configure it. Right? Um, so so which controls are we actually talking about? It's you know the two factor of everything, right? right? 
that's one of the first things the recommendations is yeah. multi-factor just, authentication. If we could just verify, yeah. and, and for those listeners, like multi-factor authentication, we all use it. You use it, right? It is where they verify the device that you're using through a, another source. Meaning, if you're trying to get into email, you're trying to get into uh, a work system, right? It has to send you an authentication mm-hmm. through an application on your phone or an iPad or something like that. It's another way of verifying the device. Correct. Yeah. So 2FA. And now yeah. at Simple, the government says, hey, 2FA, everything you have. Now it sounds simple. Oh, yeah, it's an right? easy thing to and say. Practice, it's easy to, to, to recommend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but in practice, it's hard for businesses. Why? They have 50, 50 the different systems. Solutions. They have 50 different applications, right? Yeah, right. How do you yeah. do that for all of them? Heaps of applications. And then and then only the modern ones are, are integratable with the modern 2FA. Right. Things. Right. Um, solutions like Octo. So let's say, great, I'll buy Octo or Duo to 2FA everything or Microsoft. You know, well, Octo um, has had its own 2FA. issues lately, right? Yeah, well, well, that's right. That's right. They have, they have had issues. That's right. Yeah, there's that. <laughs> that's right. But then, yeah, but what if I have things that aren't SAML enabled or OID right. enabled? So the hackers attack. So whatever you implement, look, it's no different than trying to secure your house. To me, cybercrime is just like any exactly. other Exactly. Right? If you want to secure a house, you have to, you can't just get a front door. No, you have to protect your windows mm-hmm. and make sure they have a lock or you have to put in some cameras or make, make sure you have a back door and that's locked. So, um, so what's happening with the, the issue with the, when, with cybersecurity right now is that people do what they can. Do what they can. Right. So, so instead of doing everything, because everything is too hard, they just do what they can or what they're legally required to do by an auditor. Right. Which means they have gaps. Which brings up so the issue of compliance company. versus security, right? Like you can be compliant, you can so. be checking the boxes and have everything. That does yep. not mean tick, 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 they're tick, secure. Tick, tick, tick. That doesn't right. mean they're secure. That's right. So you could have you hear companies who have CyberArk, they have Psychotic, they have Imperva, they got all these things and they still get mm-hmm. hacked. Why? Because the hackers aren't dumb. They go, Oh, you got CyberArk in this, I'll find the one that you're not protecting. Right. Because it doesn't integrate, right. so and I'll attack the gap, yep. right? So this is why it's funny. So hackers' techniques haven't. They're not. It's not like hackers have become smarter. They're not like you know aliens that aren't from this planet that have this super technology. No, they're using the same techniques, sort of infecting a machine, scanning what's around there, finding what you haven't secured, finding your open window yeah, it's, or unlocked door. That's exactly right. right. That's exactly and the in, analogy that we right? use all the time. Some people, yeah. 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 So, so what we're trying to do is, um, I've kind of given up trying to educate business owners on, hey, here's all the things uh, you have to cover because they're like, I don't even know what you're right. talking about half the time, Omar. So I'm like, here, just install this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? <So> yeah. <laughs> and, and and there's actually I tell them, look, there's only like, there's only like there's only five things that people want to get to. They want to get to a database, a Linux box, a Windows server, an internal web application, or a file drive, like a network drive. That's it. On the planet, there's only five things that people need to get to. Just I can protect those five. Just install this thing, and to those five things that you have to get to, just make sure you're going through Memory, right? Mm-hmm. So the big difference with um, I'll give you an example of how Mamori kind of helps out, right? So, so let's say you do have an Octo or a Duo. With an Octo or a Duo, um, you can 2FA your application access pretty easy. And I think you can do your SSH access, um, things like that, right? Now, what if you had things that you didn't have like a domain controller, right? Or you, or you had, you want to secure like your routers and your switches. So what Mamori can do is, hey, we can 2FA on IP access. So anytime this device tries to go to any IP address that's allowed, right, we'll send you a 2FA via your preferred 2FA provider. We covered the gap, right? So a lot of, a lot of, a lot of um, so we're doing a lot of work with um, operational infrastructure, like power plants and water treatment plants. They don't even have an AD. Right. They, have, they don't even have an AD service, right? So when an auditor comes in and says, okay, we want you to two-factor everything, they're like, you want us to upgrade you, we have to install a domain controller right. into this yeah, plant. Right? Exactly. And install yeah, right. they're they're still <laughs> running like two thousand eight <laughs> and two thousand three servers right now. They're... That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. Have like, and they have like shared workstations. Right. I mean, they have from a SOC perspective, they have right. SOC, right? So 
you know, room within room and you have ID cards and this and that, but they don't have any, they have very few um, modern facilities to, to affect. But you know what? They don't have to do through a, a very expensive upgrade. No, a memory server, 2FA on IP, they, get, they meet the auditing requirement and they're actually secure. Um, so, so we've done, um, in Singapore, there's a company that does, they simulate OT uh, play mm. pens and they have hacking yep. events, right? And we were invited, we were invited to a hacking event. Um, we had blue teams and red teams. Was it like capture so we, the flag or started, what was it? Yeah, well, yeah, they, they set up, they set up a, like a plant. So you have your, you know, your, your machinery, your SCADA systems. So, cause basically it's used by like maritime mm-hmm. ships and, and plants are kind of similar. They're kind of these self enclosed environments, right? Mm-hmm. But it, right. Yeah. So we put the memory server and then the, the other, com- the other people were kind of starting to complain because once the memory server cause was in, then the companies that were, that were detecting hacks had nothing to do because the hacks could just never happen. <laughs> so you know what I mean? So there, there are some vendors that help you. They alert you if a hack Correct. is happening. Right. So the monitoring vendors, right? But we basically, once we, once you install Momori, it's just not possible to go through certain, basically we closed all the doors. Um, so then we were asked, if, Hey, can you guys not participate in this one? Cause then otherwise the hackers, can't hack <laughs> and then we can't, we can't the, the competition is kind of boring right? so so, so right. yeah so in so in short like it did really well against that yeah yeah so, so we were invited to the other competition which is interesting where, you know, <laughs> so it's like okay no problem so so let's let's yes. let's let's dive a little bit deeper so it's a physical box mm-hmm. that they put on, or is it a virtual thing that they download? So it's a software. Okay. So it's a it's a software appliance. Um, mm-hmm. If you want to call it that, so it's it's a, you can deploy it in your on your own server. Um, in certain regions, people like to receive a physical box device, yeah. and they just install it. So the partners there have just made a device for them because that's what they feel comfortable yep. buying, right? Um, but but yeah, it's it's just a download. Uh, you install it on your on the Ubuntu box or or Red Hat. It doesn't really matter to us. Um, or Hyper V if you like to run Windows. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and then you just configure it, and it's essentially you use the modules that you need. Who right? configures so, it? Does whether, Memoria configure it, or does the internal IT or whoever their provider is? So if if the company has a security team, we usually work with them to show them how to do it. Um, if the business says, "Hey, I just want you to do it for me," then we usually have partners that can help you configure it. And then if you say, "Hey, I want you to do just remote support, just you take care of everything," we also offer um, sort of cloud, sort of um, memory servers, and then we plumb it into your kind of network, whether it's a, a virtual private cloud or an on-premise. Got network. it. Okay. And then everything basically yeah. flows through the the memory. A device or, yeah, or that's VM. Like, correct. That's right. So essentially, it could become like a um, depending on what you need. So the first thing we try to do is we try to reduce the footprint of who has real VPN access to things, mm. right? Um, oh. So let's say you have a hundred employees or twenty employees, and right now they all have VPN because they're all working right. remote. Um, a traditional VPN th- that's a big exposure because you know. Um, if one machine gets infected, it could infect mm-hmm. more. So we, the first, that's yeah. the first thing we, we try to shut down. It's like, all right, who actually needs VPN access? Because with the Momoni server, you can get access to all those machines without VPN. Ah. Right? Um, so you can get web, web only access. You can say, okay, here's a link for you. You don't need no more VPN for you. You don't need direct IP access to anything. Um, here's a link. They log onto a portal. From that portal, they can SSH to any machine they need to. They can RDP. Um, they can get to. They can run basic SQL to for whatever database they want. Um, they can access file shares and just do whatever they need to do from that web portal. Um, and it, it makes it great for the admins because you don't have to worry about the, if their laptop gets infected. You don't care, <laughs> right? So now for the people who actually need direct IP access, then you use a, a modern kind of ZTNA solution, right? And that's what we yep. you turn. You turn on that module, and then that device is registered. So even even if it activates, right, 
um, it has a virtual. We create like a virtual network in between the real between the the real network and mm-hmm. that device. So that device gets put into this virtual network. So even if it gets infected, it had there is no lateral, no no risk of lateral movement. And something that we also do that most VPN systems don't have is um, scanning is a permission. Because so basically, if you think that. about it, yeah, this well, is you, you, you had mentioned that when, when we first were speaking. So Scanning is a permission. So this is the key thing. This is what actually stops ransomware. Yeah. Imagine in your house, right? Let's it it imagine someone broke into mm-hmm. your home, right? Now, the fact that he's in your house, he hasn't stolen anything. Right. He, when he starts to look around and walk in your house and he finds right. something, that's, that, that's when the attacks, that, that's when it gets serious. Now, what happens if, if he walks into your house and now he's blind? Now it's like a blind guy has broken into your house. What he can steal, right? It's like, in, in fact, you feel so. In fact, you're worried he might right, fall yeah, over in some you're, states, and he's going to you. You're worried like, about please, the threat please. actor. Like, can you, can you please not <laughs> that's trip? That's Don't right. hurt yourself. That's, it. that's <laughs> right. So, so if you look at what all these bots do, so we kind of assume. So we, my money always takes a position that the hacker already has your credentials. Right. The hacker has already infected a machine, and he's and he's in. So. How do we stop that? And what we do is scanning is blocked, right? So unless your credential or your device is actually allowed to run scans. Meaning it, let's say they uh, had a vulnerability management scans. program that they were running just to find vulnerabilities or mm-hmm. to test. That would be allowed, yep. right? You would allow that, but then you wouldn't allow other people, yeah. anybody else to scan. Correct. Yeah. Right. So the actually, yes. If you try to run SIN scans or right. any sort of scanning, the moment you try to say, "Hey, I'm, I'm looking," I'm just scan. Show me what's in this network. You just get back nothing. It's just nothing. Nothing. You just get back nothing. And but not only that, um, whoever owns this device that you're on, because we two we, because we two FA on IP access, as it's scanning and it finds something that's actually like a real IP in a network, it's going to send the two FA to the owner of this device. So one. You're going to get ping. Hey, why is my phone going crazy? And then we also alert the admin. Hey, someone's running an unauthorized scan. And after a certain while, we just lock that device. So that, that, that's how you really stop ransomware. It's like you can try your best for the, um, to try to you know, stay ahead mm-hmm. of the curve on the things that infect machines, um, which is like your Windows Defender. And that's, that's someone else's thing. But... You, you reduce the footprint of who actually has IP access. Mm-hmm. That's step one. So you 2FA on IP, you, so you microsegment, and then you restrict the things they can get access to, and then you prevent scan. You have your intrusion detection. Right? So, You're scanning. Right. So, so yeah. okay, so this is really interesting. So how does, so so what's the, let me ask you, let me ask you this way, I apologize. So uh, what is the ideal uh, client for this environment, probably not too complex, I would imagine, right? Like, like not necessarily like a 50,000 user, multiple country, you know, vast infrastructure organization, but that the ones that struggle the most are the 20 person, the 50 person, the 120 person manufacturing company or consulting group or whatever. And they're dispersed. They're using a lot of SaaS programs, but they're, they, they, they'll, they'll still have a little bit of infrastructure and people are all over. They have terrible cyber hygiene habits. Um, this is, this sounds like it would be ideal for that group, which is like the one so, that yeah, needs so, it the most. Correct. Where the where the problem is most acute is where you've just stated. Yeah. So the big fifty thousand person org, they they can afford the um, the, the second right team. exactly. And they, yeah. they will have something and etc. Where, where it hurts the most is like you're saying. You have hey, I'm a mom and pop shop, or yeah. I'm, a, I'm a I'm a small manufacturer, or I'm a this. But I'm beginning to have. I'm I'm starting to grow. I'm finally making money. Mm-hmm. I'm growing. Um, and that's right. But they don't have. Um, they don't have the the cyber maturity, and they don't they don't even know who to talk right. to about some of this stuff. Right? So it's so yeah. so yeah, this, this is best for them. So so um, our pedigree was to build productivity tools. So no matter what it is, my job is to um, so back in the day it was databases. Databases came out. We made 
we made it so anyone could be a DBA, right? You don't have to go and get a degree and to be a DBA to do what a mm-hmm. DBA does. That's kind of what we built. Same thing. Our goal is to help anyone implement best practice without even knowing. So I guess in in in, in the in cybersecurity is I kind of given up and trying to explain, hey, here's all the 20 features and here it's more of like, hey, just install yeah. this and just do your natural thing of accessing. Right. Just do what you normally right. do, right? So, so right. actually, I tell people this: you deploy Memori, we'll configure it, right? We'll help you configure it, and then the next day, just do what you normally yeah. did. <laughs> just, you know, the only difference is you'll have to click on your phone, you know, when the two factors. You put everything else; you just be exactly. Yeah, you have same. one slight inconvenience to save your organization's yeah, brand. Right. Just that's verify right. Right. that it's actually you, and you're going to be okay. Yes. Yeah, because because really the the best security is security that's transparent right. in my mind. Right? It's almost like it's almost like when when the TSA got really you know clamping down. It's like you go to the airport, and you're like, oh, it's like, you know, massive mm-hmm. line, right? But yeah, the good security is you don't even know it's right. there, right? It's, it's, yeah, it's exactly. Kind of best in my mind, you don't even know it's there, and you're just secure. So that's fantastic. Well, that's and it's so and, and, and yeah. I've got to tell you, I love the the intent behind it. Like, I love the way you approach it because it's most business owners don't freaking care about controls and all of this. They believe in like the attorneys are practicing law. That's what they went to school for. That's what they want to do. They don't want to have to worry about this stuff. They don't want to be torpedoed while they're building their, their organization's right. brand. Same thing with medical, same thing with, you know, ins- people developing insurance practices, whatever it is. Um, and, yep. and this is a really kind of very practical approach to don't worry about it. We've got you and you'll install this and it'll be a two factor that everybody kind of has to deal with anyway. And, um, and, and, and you've got a really good layer of security. That's fantastic. So, so yeah. let me ask you this. So what, um, uh, how does somebody reach out to you guys? Like if we're talking to, uh, people and we come across somebody, uh, that, uh, would be interested in something like this, do they go to memory.io? Uh, do, do you, do you have a, a sales team or do they all call the CEO at his personal cell number, which we'll <laughs> list below? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, we'll put it in the show notes. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, you definitely can always go to the yeah. site. And just, you know, con- there's like the sales guys have a little thing and they click and it sends them an email. Yeah. And, and then we I think it's kind of get routed to the regional partner, okay. um, et cetera. So, the, yeah, so if, um, in the U.S., we have a team that we're building. So just to step yeah. back on that, I live in Australia. So for me, that's kind of the Asia is my time right. zone, right? So as the... So business is growing, we kind of primarily focused sales. The problem is that cybersecurity has a need globally. So you've come up with something really good. So you're going to have to hit a lot of time zones here. That's right. So as as that team now can I kind of stand on their own two feet, the issue for me is more of when do I get to sleep? Yeah. So um, if I sold everywhere at once and, you know, can't can't sleep. So, um, yeah, so now they're kind of self-sufficient. That's why I come now more focusing on the Americas, yeah. right? Um, so kind of, I kind of, I went reverse to what we use typically do. Typically you, you build it out in the U S and then you roll it out globally, mm-hmm. right? It's kind of, that's in the typical pattern back in. We're like, we're the South guinea pigs industry. for the world. Yeah. I mean, plus, plus yeah, most of right. us still have password <laughs> as our password and you know, <laughs> it's well, just all part of right. it, being American. <laughs> it's not our problem until it becomes our problem. <laughs> Yeah, so so sadly, the U.S. is getting this last. So ah. right now we've, um, uh, that's right. Well, you so heard the, it which here is, which is first, fun. everybody. That's, that's right. the important part. So yes, that's right. This is just um, the marketing is just starting that's in the U.S. Great. We're working now. I think I think when I look at the stats on the cyber attacks, the trends, the attackers seem to be really going for the the medical sector and the insurance Absolutely. sectors. 
And I think I, I think they're trying to go for. Pay. I don't know why. I'm guessing it's patient records. It's probably data rich. It is. Yeah, they they, they, or, they sell for quite yeah. a bit. We've we present and okay. uh, we do a lot of public speaking and training awareness training uh, for. Uh, uh, healthcare organizations and associations as well as others. Mm. And we were just doing a whole bunch of them in the last several weeks. Um, and it's just exploded in the last couple. It's always been bad. It's always been a very, you know, attack rich vector, but it's just been exploding recently. Yeah. Yep. That's, that's, yep. Well, for example, these two, these two companies just got ransomware this, this week it was their, they're medical transport yep. companies, right? So, yeah, um, they had, I mean, yeah, they, anyways, they got attacked. Yeah. So I think if we can help, that's why I'm trying to say, okay, if you're in that space, I know you don't have like a massive IT right. department, et cetera. I kind of know the profile of the business, just download this thing, give us a ring. We'll help you install it. We're trying to get a program so we can, um, um, you know, blast the ones that we know. Hey, if you have infrastructure, here's a way you can protect yourself. Because they're going after them, it's kind of it's kind of sad. You kind of, I heard about the trend last year. I'm like, oh, we should do something to protect these yeah. this segment, and then you just see them getting hammered. It's kind of um, well, it's uh, tragic. Yeah, it's you know, so it's tragic because yeah. my yeah, I mean, my yeah. I come from a family because they have very tight margins. Yeah. I mean, the, the government's changing. They're, they're they're getting squeezed on the the reimbursements. It's they're really tough. The increase in the staff. Yeah. The last thing they need. Is some guy to break into their right. server and then charge them, you know, the ten grand? It's like I don't have right. the ten grand to pay you for you. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So how does it? And maybe it's not even relevant, but how does it address SaaS programs that some of these smaller organizations will use? Right. I mean, larger organizations will use SaaS as well. But let's say there's an organization that does a lot of SaaS. They have, you know, software as a service. You know, they're 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 using their accounting system online. They're using this and that, um, and they might have one or two. They might have a server and a firewall for like files or Active Directory or something like that. But they're really doing yeah. that. Does does Memory get involved with the SaaS or is it just kind of it's separate because it it doesn't need to really. So so what we found, yeah. So yeah, so this is a common question. So we found this most modern SaaS services. They are they are already baking in. The two mm-hmm. they are. into their yep. yeah, if you like yeah like myob yep. or their accounting package or so actually that's pretty safe and then and um, so as long as you enable that feature you're you're kind right. of good right and we recommend hey turn on <laughs> turn on the two fa's for your mm-hmm. SaaS programs um, so that's right so and then and then when you just sort of listed some items there the question is what about the other stuff right because so the hackers will hack your vulnerabilities mm-hmm. right so you can't just protect your yeah. apps. You have to protect yeah. your little file share server if it's got something right. valuable, right? That you care about. Well, or, that's or what it's I'm wondering. Access so this to is why, something that's valuable, right? Oh, that's right. That's right. So it's like this is why for small business, we just say just just mm-hmm. use it. You know, we're not going to charge you for it because it's just um, just deploy it and then protect that one or two couple of things you have, um, and you're good to go, right? You're, at least you're covered. Yeah, basically stop running naked. Um, there's no need to run naked on security anymore because it's it's kind of free, mm-hmm. right? So yeah, that's yeah. fantastic. Mm-hmm. Well, well, we'll have links to the show notes. We encourage people that are interested in finding out more to check out Omar's uh, 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 new baby that he has that he's rolling out uh, across the world at at Memory.io. But uh, let's you, tell us about your you, what got you to begin in cybersecurity originally like what what was it like we've interviewed hundreds of people from around the world they've been fbi agents hackers that have gone to prison that have come out that now are helping secure organizations we've talked to global CISOs. like everybody has an origin story it's so different like some people came from marketing they had history degrees like like i don't even understand how that transgression even happened like how did you how did you you know (laughs) how did you uh that is an odd one marketing to cyber yeah it (laughs) happens it's so odd so so 
Well, maybe they were spamming. They got, hey, you know I know I'm really good at this people. stuff. That's right. I'm really like, you, you know what it is as marketers. They're like, I'm really good at social engineering. Let me get into this cybersecurity. Social, thing. Yeah, I totally yeah, I'm social that. engineering people <laughs> yeah. every day. So, so t- like, t- t- tell us kind of where, where did you grow up? Did you grow up in Australia or did you grow up somewhere else? Oh, so, so I grew up, um, so I was, <laughs> my family is very complicated in terms of, my, so I grew up in, in, I was born in El Salvador. Okay. Interesting. Um, when the war started, we moved to the U S yep. right. So I grew up mm-hmm. in Florida and then I guess in my early twenties sort of moved, um, to Australia. Interesting. Right? Um, what drew you to, do you mind so if the, I ask, we can always edit this out later. Sure. Um, what, 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 no, no, what drew you to Australia? Like from Florida, maybe. Oh Texas, no. So my, but, my girlfriend at the time, she grew up, uh, she grew up in, for love. in Australia. So she, yeah. So she moved to the U S uh, I guess during high school and then she wanted to go back in, um, raise a family and, and oddly enough people who people who are australian usually they like they love traveling mm-hmm. and they love they love the planet but then when they when they raise their kids they, they always want to go back go yeah for some reason makes yeah. perfect sense yeah. it's beautiful yeah. con- it's a beautiful continent country it's it's phenomenal there yeah it's fun yeah. Uh, for raising well I, I, for it's extremely family oriented and a lot of sports and a lot of activities mm-hmm. and it's, it's very yeah. safe extremely safe i think the um Growing up in Miami, and then um, yeah, there's a little Australia. difference there. It's a little different. <laughs> That's right. And I was like, I, I remember reading the newspaper. I'm like, kid got you know punched in the nose. I'm thinking, That's in the yeah. news. <laughs> it's like, I know. <laughs> usually, usually in Florida, it's like they don't even put the gunshots. No, <laughs> they don't at all. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't. It's really yeah, bad. Right. So yeah, so it's there's a different level of um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's how I ended up in Australia. And then how I ended up in, in cybersecurity is actually uh, completely, probably you never heard this one. So so I was a partner at a VC, and we were investing in a lot of startups. And I kind of never even thought about security at all, right? I just assumed that it was a solved problem, right? People were securing stuff, right? And there was, and we knew about, you know, large, these, you know, very big and, cybersecurity mm-hmm. businesses that made a lot of money selling security, right? right? Um, but then when you invest in startups, a lot of startups need to work with mm-hmm. government. And to work with government, you have to be certified and do certain things and prove that you're kind of doing things right. properly, right? Now, in trying to secure these small businesses to prove that we're secure, I was like, wow, this is really mm-hmm. hard, right? It's like, I'm a and expensive, right? I don't. I don't have you know, this business and have the money to go and buy, you know, pay for talk to and do it for the two FA, pay Cyberarch for the PAM, right. pay Imperv for the monitoring, pay, um, you know, um, sale point for the workflow and the automation mm-hmm. for the approval and stuff. So yeah, so j- just to get this, you know, contract with the government, I got to spend like three million dollars right. in two exactly right. <laughs> right? So yeah. it's like. It's like, and I got, you know, I got all these startups that you have to come. It's like, how do I do it? Like, nah, this got to be. Right. So I actually started looking for companies. I'm like, isn't there just a company that kind of just, so usually in, in the world of software, if, if the problem is acute, there's always someone that's kind of doing mm-hmm. it, right? Um, so no, yeah, because no problem kind of exists in isolation, mm-hmm. right? So yeah, and no one, no one actually, what I realized is vendors make really good money selling features mm-hmm. right ah, so, yeah. so usually because yeah. really from your business if, if, let's put it the flip the shoe if i can if i can make money just selling you a feature why would i take the time to actually try to solve your problem right. you're not asking me to solve the problem you're asking right. me to just give you two fa you know what i'll give you two right. fa then it's so yeah. very few people go and say no no what you really want is it's almost like hey if i can just sell you a tire right then, and you're never asking for a car. I'll just sell you right. the time, you know. So, so really, it's it's a problem of vendors are making. You know, CyberArk sells you the PAM, and Purpose sells you the mm-hmm. DAM, and the SailPoint sells you the workflow. It is up to you to put your car together. Right. So, really, the industry is spending three hundred billion dollars or close to three hundred billion dollars in cybersecurity spend, and everyone is walking around with a tire, mm-hmm. thinking they have. A- right. That's a great <laughs> analogy. <laughs> That's a great analogy. So I was like, okay, and and that's why that's why no one kind of has ever 
Um, so I think the trend, the trend in cybersecurity is now that people actually want to be secure, business owners aren't stupid. Because before 10, 10 years, years ago, ago they didn't people care. just needed just to tick, tick yeah. my checkbox. Yes. Give me the features yeah. that I need to get this auditor. That's off exactly my right. That's it was it yeah. was very But yeah. now it's like yeah, now it's not like that anymore. Hey, give me what I need because my insurance company won't give right. me insurance. Or I don't want to be on the I'm news. Actually I don't want to be on the news, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. want to be in the news. That's right. So now the vendor, so now there is no big vendor you can say, hey, secure me. Right. Because no vendor actually sells you security. They sell you to a fa. So the big lie is what most people misunderstand is now the sales guys will say, hey, if you get my tire, yeah. You kind of yeah. If you get my tire, you can cruise around town, but it it's leaving out the part that you need the rest of the car, right? It's it's leaving out that part. They leave it out, yeah. Because the whole industry has been geared to just sell features. So when you discovered this, was there a was there an incident, or did you like? What led you to discover it? Like, was there an event in your life where you saw somebody speak, or there was something? Just curious. It was it was actually the, the buddy who where I'm I'm here in Long Island. This in this he just bought this this place, and he's like um, we were doing VC deals together. He's like the other half of my mm-hmm. brain. We I did like all the technical diligence, and he's he would do the sales diligence. Great. And, and I would talk and I would talk to him about this security stuff. He's like, Omar, I have no idea about security <laughs> stuff. Just just <laughs> just can we just secure them? <laughs> so I was like, right. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? Um, at a at a business owner level, so really, I was just okay. What do I need to make this simple for business yeah. owners? This really my my focus is because really they're the ones that have to make a call. They're the ones that put their neck on the line. They're putting in the money for the business, um, and they're worried about their employees. And then they have this sort of, you know, a hacker is someone they never see using techniques they have no idea right. about attacking things that are in the cloud that they can't. So it's very intangible. So I was like, okay. So the epiphany was, or how do I just package mm-hmm. it up? How do I just say, you know what? All right, Mike, do you know about, so business owners understand um, best practice standards, mm-hmm. compliant. You, that's yeah. very, you say, Hey, look, the government's recommending you do these 10 things. If you install this box, this will do seven out of the 10. It goes, there you go. Great. And, and and more importantly, but then they go, yeah, 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 okay, but will it stop the ransomware? What do I need to stop? Right? Yep, this will stop ransomware attacks, yep. right? Because it does, it has everything that's needed to stop, you know. So what's needed, right? 2FA, micro-segmentation, right? And intrusion detection, so stop the scan. Yep. So ransomware, gets, so even if a machine gets infected, the ransomware guy is blind. He can't see anything. He can't scan, right? Very good. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much. That's it. great. Yeah. Yes, we can thank Mike. You can thank Mike for the. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> for so pretty- yeah, we 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 need to speak to the other half the other half of the brain, like just 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 be like, how did you come up with it? It's so great. He's not technical. It's awesome. So. Yeah, he's like that's yeah. confusing. Mm-hmm. So so yeah, and that's really interesting, especially the escalation of privileges and and all that by being able to kind of keep them blind, even if they get in and launch something, is 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 really helpful. That's yep. fantastic. So what's uh, what's next for you and Memoria? Yeah, so really for for Memoria is just listening to the the users and customers. So it's like. Um, how to make it simple to consume for these small, and medium businesses is probably the thing. Getting the word out there so people don't don't get hacked without any right. reason, um, and just and just having fun building out the org, right? That's so, fantastic. Um, well, yeah. that's great. Well, Should we, we wish you nothing but success. We will have links in the uh, show notes, okay. and I'm sure we'll have lots of other opportunities to speak um, because there's going to oh, be a yeah. lot of need. We come across people every day that uh, need things like this. So this is fantastic. Um, thank you so much, Omar. Thanks thanks for your time. It was uh, really interesting to to learn about this, to learn about Memori and to hear your your drive and help for small small businesses yep. and small organizations. Absolutely. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks for See having you, me. See you, sir. <laughs> Bye. All right. Bye-bye.
Well, that wraps this up. Thanks for joining everybody. Hope you got value out of digging deeper behind the scenes of security and cybercrime today. Please don't forget to help keep this going by subscribing free to our YouTube channel at Cybercrime Junkies Podcast and download and enjoy all of our past episodes on Apple and Spotify podcasts so we can continue to bring you more of what matters. This is Cybercrime Junkies, and we thank you for joining us.